In this video, we'll look at how to use Groove Machine's Sample Editor window. The first thing to know about this window is that it controls three distinct areas of Groove Machine. Those are the drum sampler, the synth generator, and the MIDI EQ settings. In this video, we'll stay focused on the sample editor. Use this button in the corner to switch between these functions. And this button tells you what it's going to display when you click it, not what's on the screen now. So when it says synth, it means click here to show the synth controls. And by the way, once you're in synth mode like this, the window will automatically switch between the synth editor and the sample editor, depending on what part's in focus. So if I click on the first synth part, the editor changes to show me synth parameters. And if I click back on a drum part, the editor changes again to show me sample editing parameters. Nice. And if I switch back to the MIDI EQ editor, those settings will automatically switch to whatever part I have in focus, like this. Okay, put the window into synth mode and click the drum part you want to work with. I'll choose bass drum. And remember, with Groove Machine stopped like this, you can click on the buttons at the bottom to hear the part that's in focus. Now, the sample editor lets you have up to four layers or four sounds that play together. Click on each layer to see what's in there. You can see that I have samples in layers one and two, but layers three and four are empty. You can use the buttons marked BPS to bypass or mute a layer. If I select layer one, I can see the name of the sample is Club Kick 03. I can also see that it comes from the bass drum's sound bank. And you can use these windows to load up different samples if you want to. You can actually load any sound you want into the bass drum one part, but if you stick with using bass drum sounds, then you can use any general MIDI percussion pattern without having to remap stuff. The three knobs in the corner affect all the layers in the part. That's why they're labeled common. This lets me adjust the overall volume of my bass drum stack. I can pan it or change its collective pitch. These other controls affect each layer independently. So if I want to have layer two come in more slowly, I select layer two, then increase its attack time. But if I jump back to layer one, you see its attack time didn't change. You can adjust each layer's attack time, hold level, and decay time. You can also adjust the filters and resonance for each layer and play with delaying the start time, play it in reverse, or even flip it upside down. To see this in action, let's refocus on drum part eight. You can see it has two layers, each one playing a crash cymbal. I'm gonna mute layer one, select layer two, and have a listen. Now, I'll click the option to reverse the sample and listen again. And if I increase the resonance and center the filters, cool. I can click and drag the waveform around to adjust its start time. And I can even shift to the next or previous sample in the bank without leaving the editor. I can use the load key to bring in something from another part of my file structure. And if I mess it all up, I can hit the reset button. For more great software, check out the ImageLine website. And for more great tutorials, visit streamworksaudio.com.